Raw last night, everyone. Did you watch the show? Let's get into it here. Show it up with Alexa's Playground. I won't mention any names, but I got a text five minutes through the show from somebody that said, new record, turned off two seconds in. We'll see where the ratings go for this show. She's doing her playground. She tells us that Lily is in time out because of a strongly worded complaint and the fact that they're going back on the road soon. I can talk more about that later. But then Nye shows up and challenges Alexa to a match tonight, so we're getting an Alexa Bliss match on Raw. We had Nikki Cross beating Charlotte Flair. Rhea Ripley is out there. I swear to God, this is the finish. Charlotte gives Nikki Cross an overhead throw onto the hard floor. Nikki responds by just getting up and getting in the ring. Charlotte, meanwhile, is distracted by Rhea Ripley, so Nikki wins by count out. She has now won three, four straight weeks now she's won. None of them an actual victory. All of them backdooring her way in. And then, of course, Charlotte absolutely destroys her afterwards. And then Rhea gets in the ring and lays out Charlotte. So I don't know what's going on. They're not even putting Nikki in the match at the pay-per-view as a three-way. It's like the whole point of this is let's just beat everyone in the championship match multiple times. Then maybe you'll care. I think Charlotte's winning on Sunday. That's the impression I got watching this show. We had John Morrison beating Jeff Hardy in two minutes. This coming off Jeff Hardy beating Cedric Alexander last week. Cedric Alexander then comes out and makes fun of him. So Jeff Hardy says, I swear to God, get in the ring right now. If I can't beat you, I will retire. I don't think we've ever had a retirement match with three minutes build in the history of professional wrestling. But we've got, even Russo wouldn't do that. So they get in the ring, and uh, Jeff Hardy beats him, so Jeff Hardy's not going to retire. We have the Eva Marie debut after all of these weeks. Yes, Eva Marie is, actually, I don't even know if she's a heel, because the bloke in the Thunderdome didn't say cheer or boo. He just said, like, uh, let's hear some noise. So I guess, you know, whatever. So it was supposed to be Eva Marie versus Naomi. But Eva Marie comes out with Piper Niven, who the announcers have to pretend like they have no idea who Piper Niven is, even though she's dressed exactly like Piper Niven is. It's not even like they gave her a makeover. It's like unquestionably Piper Niven. She goes down to the ring. She squashes Naomi. And then Eva Marie announces that she, Eva Marie, is the winner. That's what they came up with after all this time. That's their plan. We had a segment with Mandy and Dana and Natty and Tamina, which, I mean, literally, we could talk about this for an hour. So I'm just going to say that they they had a brawl. We had Riddle and Randy Orton versus Kofi and Xavier. This was hour two. This was like the good hour. So they went 21 minutes. They had a very good match. Riddle and Xavier Woods are the best feud in all of WWE right now. And then Randy Orton pins Xavier Woods clean in the middle with the RKO. Which, of course, sets up the eventual RKO or RK Bro championship match and furthers the storyline with MVP and Kofi. So, like, this is perfect pro wrestling in the middle of Raw. Then we had another good match, which was Rhea Ripley and Asuka. Asuka was just on fire in this match, but she does a job in 11 minutes to the Riptide. Clean in the middle, no Charlotte, no distraction, no BS. Rhea just beat her here in the second hour. And then Charlotte ran down for a brawl. And for all of you that are sick of, like, brawls, especially if you're, like, NXT viewers, this brawl was great. Charlotte was in full crazy flare mode. She's so out of control, she somehow gets her nose all busted open. She's bleeding everywhere and going crazy. This was good. We had... Alexa and Naya. As you can see, we are now into the third hour. So they had a match, and there was there was no voodoo or anything like that in the match. And, like, all this time, they still won't beat Nia Jax, even in Alexa's in-ring debut after God only knows how long. She hits the Twisted Bliss. Reginald runs in for the DQ. Alexa then hypnotizes Reginald. She looks at him and tilts her head. And Reginald tilts his head, and he's in a trance, and then she leaves, and Nia has to loudly say, Reginald, snap out of it! It's horrible. But they wrestled. At least there wasn't a lot of voodoo. 
But I want to talk about her and the doll after a while. MVP tried to recruit Kofi again. MVP and Kofi are fantastic in their in the way that they play off each other and uh, the stuff they do on this show. I hope they're not going to turn Woods or Kofi heel, but it looks like they're going somewhere. Although we say that a lot, and ultimately they go nowhere. Jackson Riker Elias. Elias walked out. Oh, wait, Brian, didn't they do that last week? Yes, three-minute match, Elias walked out. This week, at least they didn't tell us, don't worry, well, they'll surely wrestle again. They were as irritated as we were on commentary. And finally, it's Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles. They go 13 minutes to a DQ, which leads to a six-man tag. Drew McIntyre and the Viking Raiders versus Lashley, AJ, and Omos. And at the end of the match, after months and months of Drew McIntyre talking about all I want to do is hit the Claymore on Lashley and pin him in an unannounced match in the lowest rated hour of Monday Night Raw. Drew McIntyre pins a distracted Lashley with the Claymore. Whatever. That's the show. A whole lot of whatever. I don't have many talking points coming out of this show, so maybe... Can you, you believe a, they gave away the Claymore for free? Or are you going to pull the Dave thing here that it was a great booking idea? In... I understand, because I, I didn't... I've only heard parts of your banter with him. I'll say this. To have a guy beat somebody with the move right... I... It can make some sense... But you've waited this long to do it. And if you were building this up where you wanted to show that he could hit the knockout punch, he could hit the Claymore and lay Lashley out and get the victory, okay. But we've built this thing up for so long that, like, if you were going to to wait this long, go ahead, have him get the advantage on Lashley some other way and stand over him and then have him hit the Claymore when it's time for him to win the title. Unless he's not going to win the title... I'm surprised that they decided to do that. They have waited this long, but is it out of the realm of normal thought to do something like that? No, it's not. You know, it actually is not. It's been done for years. It's just when you've waited this long and that's going to be the big payoff and that's what he's been talking about the whole time. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that they went ahead and did it there as opposed to just going ahead to do it on Sunday, especially when again this is for 4.99 on peacock or whatever it is or free for a lot of people so it's not like you had to build up with some sort of you know of, oh my god sort of thing right there you could have just waited on sunday and had him hit the claymore and win because again unless he's not winning on sunday why did you do it then so it's not the end of the world but when you've waited this long it just didn't make any sense but there was a lot on the show that didn't make any sense. Well, I mean, if he's if he's not winning Sunday, then I can understand giving it away. But, I mean, I don't know. Whatever. Back in a moment, Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.